Uh, you got challenges that you're going to run across. But no, I, I had this conversation twice uh, this this past week that I, I still don't understand why you're teaching uh, history and civics and 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 I and I only say that because if you if you and I'm not saying because civics if I want to go in government then I might need to know about civics but. It should be specialized if somebody say, I want to be a lawyer, I want to be a doctor, that should be something. But what we do know is, I don't care what you're doing in life, we know you need to know about finance. Mm -hmm. We know you need to know about taxes. We know you need to know about credit. We know you need to know about ownership. So I'm a big fan of it to where I'm putting together a curriculum in a class now called... Um, I think I came with the title is basically uh, I forgot what it was, but it's a continuous ed continuous education so like, mm -hmm. for young people, for people to really start teaching young people what the schools are not giving them. And as you said, the oppressor is not going to give the oppressed the game. No. So no, bro, Tony, they still teaching the same stuff, bro. No. You was in school in eighteen oh four, and they still teaching the same thing now. <laughs> that they was teaching in school. Yeah. Like, man, that's know, crazy. You know it's got to be intentional and even the yeah. length of time that we're in school because everything is, a, is, is abbreviated now because of what we have on the internet. You don't have to be in school that long now, but they're still doing it. It's a process that they're grooming us for. And, you know, that's amazing, man, to think about that, to know. I mean, and we're so busy and caught up that we don't really think about a lot of stuff that we're that we're saying here because we're like i don't need to learn that but th think about it if you started in sixth grade and seventh grade eighth grade ninth grade it'll be natural to you just like anything yeah. else but that's yeah. intentional um so now you said that you always was an entrepreneur in, in your you know before you even uh for that situation even happened you already had so when you was at southern uh the hbcu down in baton rouge the one that Jackson State always kicking their butt. So when you were there, were you had an entrepreneur mind then? Were you thinking, or were you just partying? But I was partying because I don't, I don't have the, I don't have the experience of man. We were struggling college students. When I was in college, man, we ate steak, shrimp, fish, crab legs, because again, I had an on. I had an off-campus grocery store, and before I went to Baton Rouge, I was in school at New Orleans. I was at Southern in New Orleans, and I was I was in the street a little bit, so I, I never wanted for money. You know, basically that was the time. So I, I had that kind of entrepreneurial asp uh, aspirations, and then you know it was other little things that I may have done. But when I got to Southern, you know, it was basically always something that i was doing business minded if it was i don't know if people really know the, about the phone codes so if you stayed out of town and you had those phone codes where you can call home for free you know i was the guy that always had the phone codes. So i sold phone codes <laughs> okay. i had i had a car when i went to southern so basically i call what i call a transportation service so I used to bring the girls who wanted to go over the hump to get something to eat late at night, but they had to either pay me or buy me some food or buy my roommate some food. You know, so it was always something I was doing. If it was shooting pool, if it was something I was doing to make money. Um, if it was cats going to New Orleans, you know, going home for the weekend, and I was going down. My transportation company, you had to pay me basically to get a ride down. So it was always something. And then when I got the off-campus grocery store, you know that basically went to a whole nother level because I was I I was that dude like dudes would tell you man like if it wasn't for Brian but I don't know if I'd have got to here because I, I would sell twenty dollar bags of grocery, you know, and so you could come you could come to my apartment and you could get a grocery bag with uh, peanut butter and jelly bread sandwich meat you know uh, cookies Wait a stop man stop. that's what you call that's what you were talking about I was wondering you said off the campus grocery store so. Yeah. At your apartment, you would bag up. Like, yeah, so you you could come get a twenty dollar bag, and if you was a if you was a if you was a VIP client, I might throw a steak in there and some shrimp. Bruh. Man, Bruh. I, don't know that. I mean, what? <laughs> yeah. So I, I I was always entrepreneur, and even in my book, I talked about this too. And I was talking to one of my partners. I say, bro, I say, I asked him before before I wrote my book. I say. 
I say, how old were we when I used to lend y'all money and y'all used to have to pay me back interest? They were all older than me. They were the dudes who wanted to be polo down and always dressing. So they used to go to Rubenstein, right. buy the clothes, but they would come to me. He said, man, he said, I think, he said, I think I was, uh, he said, I think I was probably like 11, 12th grade, 10th to the 12th grade, and maybe a little in college. And they was a couple of years older than me. So I had to be like in the 10th grade or something. And I used to lend the dudes in the neighborhood money to shoot dice, shoot pool, go buy clothes, and they would give me interest on everything they make when I was in junior high and high school. So that kind of goes back to, which we're going to talk about at the end, about you saying entrepreneurs are born and not made. And I, I got a young lady that I'm going to be interviewing soon that we had a kind of, we had a, a long conversation about that. If she was so adamant about that, but I want to hold that to the end. So let's go back to the day you got out, you know, when you got out of, uh, you, you, from got out of the fed, you know, you took your cuff, I mean, took the handcuffs off and they gave you your clothes and, and you stepped outside. Who picked you up? Uh, well, she wasn't my wife then, but my ex-wife. Was she the only one? Was anybody with her at the time or was it just? I don't even remember. I think she was the only one though. Okay. So y'all yeah, hugged and y'all hugged and all that. You got in the car. What did you go? Did you go to your mom's house? Did you? What, no, I think we came back to Atlanta because remember I was in Pensacola. And if I'm not mistaken, we came back to Atlanta. And I think eventually I went home to see my mom then. Um yeah, but it wasn't, you know, like I said, because I did I went straight. Well, yeah, she came, got me to bring me from that to the halfway house in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So okay. yeah. And, and so when so you went I, there, did you you had to go direct there? They was looking for you. They was probably looking at the time, making sure you come. Oh, yeah, yeah. You had okay. to go, you had to go direct okay. to the halfway house. So you get to the halfway house. I know I had a partner of mine. He said he was in one on a uh, that was on uh, Ponce de Leon, and uh, I would go see him every now and then because he was down there for three months. So when you got there, what was your strategy then? Because at the halfway house, could you go in and out, or you could you had to yeah. What, you, the only time you had to go out is you go either looking for a job or go to work. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is, I was intentional about everything and this is what i was telling my mastermind group the other night like you got to be intentional about everything like even even when i was locked up my first job was off the base at the navy base in pensacola like a lot of cats used to like to go to the navy base because you get to see women yeah you get to be outside you get to do all kind of stuff but man we we had days when it's cold or raining because we were doing landscaping and all that kind of stuff but when it rained or it's cold, we would just go and we'd be sitting inside, outside, I mean, inside, just talking about bull crap. And so, man, I'm like, man, you know what? I could be reading, I could be writing, I could be studying. So I asked them to change my detail. So they actually put me in the dorms and put me on a janitorial duty to do the floors every day. So I would finish the floors probably in about two hours, man, and I would go to the library. I would probably go on the weight pile for a second and I'll go there and go to the library and I learned how to type. You know, I learned uh, I learned computers. I learned taxes. I learned all of that by going to the library. And the thing about it is I was intentional about mm -hmm. not wasting my time because I was short. And, you know, short is basically like when you under two years, they say you short. So I'm like, bro, I'm a see girls in a right. couple of in a couple of yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not worried about that yeah, hanging yeah. out and being able to right. talk to the women and all those kind right. of things. So I was like, bring me back inside where I could be productive. So the same with the halfway house, like with the halfway house, once I got to the halfway house, they kept trying to get me to do because they wouldn't let you work your own business because you got too much control. So I couldn't work none of my businesses. So what I did was I intentionally went across the street from because I was on Fulton Industrial at the halfway house on Fulton Industrial. Yeah. I went I went across the street to that subway and got a job at Subway. Because wow. I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna waste a lot of time looking for a high profile when I only got three months in there. So that gave me the uh, that gave me the flexibility to stay close. Plus I lived in Mapleton, which was right mm -hmm. around the corner. Right. So I, I would sneak off. It's 20 years, y'all. I can say that now. So my girl would come get me because it's right there 10 minutes from where I work, 10 minutes from the halfway house. So sometimes I would go home 
and I would I would practice taxes. I would learn. I would do different things. So I was very I was very intentional about the whole process and not wasting that time. So that halfway house on Fulton Industrial was it on the end where next by twenty and Six Flags or was it back? Yeah, the other one. No, it's close to twenty. It's close to twenty on uh, okay. on Fulton Industrial. Okay, and so you all were, the night. Well, all the night walkers and everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. They had all the strip joints on there too. <laughs> not, so, not on that side. Yeah. So okay. it was on the other side. Yeah. Okay. It was a Holiday Inn that that was over there. I remember that. Uh, yeah, full industrial. Uh, yeah, uh, and that's where the private airport is too, right? Well, that's further down. Okay. So well, the halfway house was closer to twenty. Okay. All right. So now. Let's say you out of the, you out of the halfway house now. What day did you officially open LNB Tax Service? Make sure that you like and subscribe and, and hit the all button and all that kind of stuff because we're going to have a lot of good interviews uh, on this podcast.